there going to be a pattern in here for my vest? Because if there is, it's going to save me a ton of time. This is definitely not very ergonomic. I didn't necessarily anticipate this exact situation when I packed my suitcases. You should usually wash your fabric before you use it, unless you're stuck in a hotel and need to make a costume for a show tomorrow. Then we can make some exceptions, I think. Hello friends and welcome or welcome back. I'm Shannon Makes, creative sewist by day, circus artist by night. And today's video is definitely a bit of a wild ride, race against the clock as I try to juggle sewing a new costume with a packed rehearsal schedule for our show, which opens literally tonight as I am recording this. So join me for a bit of all-terrain sewing as well as a peek into how our show came together. 20 minutes ago, I was jammed in the back of a Camaro with a seven foot tall technician named Tarzan making an emergency run to Joanne Fabrics to pick up material for a costume that needs to be done in two days. So how did I find myself panic sewing a costume for a contract that we've known we were going to be doing for months now? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. We submitted photos of our costume to the production months ago back in mid-September along with a list of costume requirements should they decide to provide their own costumes instead of using our original ones. Now, as you may or may not know or be able to guess, performing high-level circus acts on stage often comes with a fairly lengthy list of costume requirements so that we can perform both comfortably but also safely. And those requirements differ a lot from act to act and even down to which specific tricks you'll be performing in that routine. Things like what parts of your body have to be covered versus which ones need to be exposed, certain fabric types that can be used, which parts of the costume can or have to be stretchy, and other parts that absolutely can't stretch at all. So it's not just a question of preference or aesthetic, but it's actually literally about safety and being able to perform your routines night after night and not being worried about destroying the costumes or, you know, questions of safety, let's just say. There was pretty much only one fabric in the whole store that was both sturdy enough to work for the vest and in the requested blue or purple color. What do you think about it? It's yeah, this. that's perfect. With only one viable fabric choice, I sent Phil off to search for buttons while I waited at the cut counter. You guys can see. Thank you so much. Yes. All right, let's get going. Our original costumes, which were a very vaguely vintage lamp lighter style costumes, were given the original seal of approval based on that email. But when we arrived on site and the wardrobe department saw them in real life, they took one look and they were like, mm, that doesn't really fit with the rest of the aesthetic of the show which is quite true, they really didn't. So they said, okay, can you come take a look at these costumes that we brought for you and see if they'll fit? And they definitely went way more with the color scheme of the current show, they were much brighter, but they also met exactly zero of the requirements that we had sent. Fortunately, I know how to sew and I had even thrown a couple of costume patterns in the suitcase with me. So I said, look, I'm gonna try to go find some fabric and throw together a vest or two. So at least the top part of our costume matches is a bit brighter. And that was the working game plan for the moment. Now, not only was I trying to juggle day long rehearsals with costume making, but I was also trying to make a video about it, which necessitated some rearranging. Wow. Yeah. That's one heck of a fit. Right, yeah, I have to like find some way to tie those back maybe. Voila. So now the table is set up and the next big question is, 
is there going to be a pattern in here for my vest? Because if there is, it's going to save me a ton of time. And if there isn't, well, we're still going to get it done. It's just, it's going to take a lot longer. Oh, this is, this is definitely not very ergonomic. Folks, do not, do not recommend. How am I? I guess we're just kneeling now. We're just going to kneel. Let's take a look. Cross your fingers, folks. That's a pretty good sign. So the good news is that having found this pattern saved me a ton of time. The bad news is that I didn't necessarily anticipate this exact situation when I packed my suitcases. So I don't have any regular scissors, which means that to cut out this paper pattern, I have two choices. I have my normal fabric scissors or my tiny fabric scissors. And since I don't plan on adding carpal tunnels to my list of woes today, it's a uh, it's going to be these guys. Okay, so I've got my pattern pieces all cut out, which means that now it's gonna be time to go get the fabric and start cutting into that. Now, normally I am a huge advocate for washing your fabric before you start cutting into it. And I do still stand by that. However, this is a bit of an extreme and unusual circumstance. So in this case, I'm not gonna wash my fabric. One, because I'm on an insanely tight deadline. Two, because I just physically don't have access to a washing machine or a dryer. I would have to take an Uber and go out, find a laundromat somewhere, and I do not have the time for that. But also because the current vest that I own, I don't think it's ever been washed and it's about four years old. All of the sweat gets caught on the blouse that I wear underneath it. So I'm really not too concerned about it in this situation. However, I do generally stand by the principle that you should usually wash your fabric before you use it. Unless you're stuck in a hotel and need to make a costume for a show tomorrow. Then we can make some exceptions, I think. Now I'm going to be trying one of these water-soluble marking pencils for the first time. Usually I would either use chalk or just a regular pen, but I didn't bring any of that with me because I was not planning on needing to do anything resembling precision sewing on this trip. So stopped and grabbed one of these. We'll see how it works. None of these pieces have seam allowance in the pattern, so I'm gonna be adding that on myself afterwards. So let's just get going and uh, let's hope that this does at least somewhat the job. A hey boy. For real? Garbage. Garbage. Well, it's actually worse than I expected. It does absolutely nothing on the fabric except scrape it up. Like, admittedly, it's not very high quality fabric, but it doesn't leave any mark of white whatsoever, but it does kind of just destroy the fibers as I run this across. So we will not be using this and we'll be finding another solution, I guess. Oops. to get everything cut out before our call time, but I got enough done so that I could bring it with and keep working on it at the theater. As I mentioned before, there are certain requirements that our costumes need to meet in order for us to perform safely and comfortably, and that's the reason that I'm taking the time to baste and flatline all of these pieces. 
All of this work is literally for one moment in the routine where Phil is holding me up in the air and his only point of contact with me is with his hand on my back. All of my weight is on that one hand at that point and his grip needs to be super sturdy. If I was to make the vest the quicker and more standard way where I sew all of the outer pieces of the vest together and then all of the inner pieces together and then join those two layers together by sewing them around the perimeter of the vest, that would actually be kind of dangerous for me. And this method is called bag lining, so I've brought a visual aid to help me describe why this is so dangerous. So basically, so if his hand is on the back of my vest and all of my weight is on there, but the two layers can still go like that, then we've got some slippage. And slippage, when you're in the air, it's no good. So even though it's a little bit slower and definitely more fiddly, I always flatline my vests, which keeps the slippage factor to a minimum and keeps me safely in the air. Welcome back to day two and also to my incredibly chaotic hotel room. Lots of good progress happened yesterday. I got a vast majority of the pieces cut out and basted together and basically ready to run through the machine hopefully, later today. I'm just gonna go in this morning before we start rehearsals in about an hour and cut out the last few pieces. So I've got the side back here and also the center front, which I thought I had finished this yesterday, but fun fact, I thought about it and realized, no, I need to cut out a couple more because the center front here actually it gets a facing of, you know, the outside fabric. It does not get lining, so I gotta cut a couple more of those out. Let's get to cutting and basting. All right, so I now have a hefty wad of pieces all here ready to go. Everything is basted, should be ready to run through the machine. So I'm gonna head down, start rehearsals, and as soon as I have a free moment, I'm gonna pop on over to wardrobe and see if, fingers crossed, they let me use their machines. Because if I can at least use their regular sewing machine and hopefully also their serger to take care of these crazy edges, that's gonna make my life so much easier. This creation process is gonna to go so much smoother and so much faster. So let's get over to rehearsals and uh, wish me luck with wardrobe. While wardrobe was very accommodating and did agree to let me use their machines, including their serger, there were also lots of times where I couldn't, either because wardrobe was using them for all the alterations they had to do, or because I had to be on or immediately next to the stage for rehearsals. So the day was kind of a mix of hand sewing, rehearsing, and surging. Great hands, that's perfect, exactly. It's five, six, seven, eight, close. Amazing. And yeah, I think for that player too as well when you're coming in and the dancer comes up and the branches go behind you and it's like a whole, exactly, a whole thing that's going on right there. All right, I feel good with that. You guys feel good? Yeah, awesome. I look for that. Okay, great. I did also manage to get the very fronts of the vests sewn together and ironed down, although there was a severe lack of outlets in the lobby where we were rehearsing, so I had to set up in the only place where I could find outlets, which was the concession stand. Fortunately, I brought a tiny little travel iron with me so I didn't have to try and borrow one from the already strapped wardrobe department. 
Now I know people are going to ask me about this iron so I will link it down in the description but I want to be clear, I am not saying to go out and buy this iron. I'm saying that if you were already considering buying a tiny iron, whether it's for conventions or for accessibility, that this one did work really well for me. I'm quite pleased with it, although I also haven't tested it yet at full heat. I will, however, be testing it on the road with me in the coming weeks and keeping you updated as part of my circus and crafting vlogmas series. So if you want updates on the iron situation or the costumes and the show, be sure to subscribe and tune in for that. Okay friends, really quick day three update because I'm pretty sure I didn't do a great job of filming stuff yesterday. That has definitely been one of the biggest challenges on this project and this video is juggling not just the rehearsals and then trying to sew the costume during the rehearsals for the show, but then also trying to film it while one in a very public place and with bad lighting and it's just been an experience. But look at this. That is the back of a vest and I'm very, very happy about how it is turning out. Now it is not sewn together, it is simply basted so none of the seams are properly sewn or clipped or ironed so it is sitting a little bit funny at the moment but it, it's looking like something which is very fun. Also considerably brighter than the vest that I currently own so that's fun. So we've got the back here and then I also have the two fronts over here like this. Again, not sewn down, purely basted, but looking uh, quite good. So that is the first thing on the agenda for today is to go in and sew all this down and then hopefully to join the front half with the back half and then to add the uh, buttons. And the goal is to get this all done by 8 p.m. tonight because at 8 p.m. we have a costume parade, which essentially it sounds really fancy, but it's really just everyone gets in their costume and full makeup and tries on all of the costumes that they're going to wear in the show. Am I gonna get this sewn together by 8 p.m. considering that we have like a full day of rehearsals? Probably not, but I'm gonna try. The buttonholes probably are gonna be the thing that slows me down the most. So let's go into rehearsals and try to get this sewn together. I think day three most encapsulated the entire experience of trying to get this vest together. There was trying to learn not one, but two new machines, both of which were far more modern than anything I'm used to using. The intermittent need to be on stage constantly interrupting the sewing process, so any sewing was done in tiny spurts of a few minutes here or there in what I came to think of as guerrilla sewing tactics. I spent the whole day carrying the sewing around with me, basically using any spare second that I wasn't needed in the show to try to get this vest together, regardless of a complete lack of consistent or sufficient lighting or music blasting in my ear. You're still in the air, coming down here, coming down, great. Shannon, look here. It was an absolutely wild experience and yet it's exactly the kind of thing that I love. Don't get me wrong, I went back to the hotel every night exhausted and collapsed into bed, but it was so exhilarating to be completely and totally occupied every minute of the day with things that I love doing. So did I finish in time for the costume parade and for opening night? Well, the buttonholes put up a huge fight. I personally don't use modern machines. I don't know how to use this button foot attachment and neither of the customers on site knew how to use the buttonhole function on their machines either. They were much more used to, you know, more quick release style fasteners. So I was basically on my own to Google how to do it. And then when it was causing some problems, I was 
on my own to troubleshoot it as well, but they did eventually get done. Now some of you may be wondering, okay, so your vest is done, but what about Phil? What are we doing with him? Let me tell you, I had the same questions. I wasn't entirely sure because while I had my pattern for my vest, I don't have a pattern for Phil's vest. His was actually store-bought. And while I could have drafted one from his current vest, it just would have taken way longer. And while it was kind of a fun, exhilarating experience to panic sew one vest during rehearsals, I'm not entirely sure I had it in me to do a second one. So it was a great relief to me when somebody somewhere found a vest that was both you know a suitable ish size and matched really well surprisingly well color wise with my vest so that's what we're going with his is from the production mine is handmade and i will probably actually end up making him a second vest to match mine because i have enough fabric and that way you know we can use it outside of this contract but that'll probably wait until i'm back in a space with you know, regular lighting or maybe a table of some sort. So let's uh, stop talking and take a look at the final results. So this reveal might not be quite as well shot as I would have liked, but let's just add that to the list of challenges that this past week threw at me. I'm happy to celebrate the fact that it's done and on stage in time for opening night. If you're still here, if you stuck around to this point, please let me know how you felt about the video. I fully admit that I almost didn't release this video because it's not shot up to the normal standard as the rest of my videos and there was a lot of self-doubt and questioning just in terms of the whole filming process. But recently I've also been trying to lower the bar towards filming and making videos and just being a little bit more forgiving and gentle on myself. So I decided to release it out into the wild and I hope that you all enjoyed it even though it's maybe not quite as meticulously shot as my usual standard. Also in the same line of thought, I have decided to do a little mini Vlogmas series this year since we'll be traveling around the country with a different show in a different city every day or two and with a Christmas show on top of that. So I hope if you are into that sort of thing, if you want to learn a little bit more about the behind the scenes of the show or just get a little more casual look at all the crafting I'll be doing because trust me, I brought a lot of crafts to keep me occupied in our downtime here on tour. I hope you'll be joining me for that. I know that vlogs are not necessarily everybody's thing and that's totally fine, but I hope you'll at least give it a try and uh, maybe I can keep you company during some of your own holiday crafting, cleaning, preparation, that sort of thing. So I will have a short little announcement video for that coming out probably next week. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in that next video. Bye. I feel exactly like you, Grant, in love, actually, every time I do this, and I just, I just can't stop. Whoa, that's welcome my wave.